whoa, I just finished drinking my water. It's so hot. And I drink all this water. Remember the bottle, Kids Connection? Yes, it was nice and cold. Oh, I love water. Welcome to Kids Connection, kids. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, fun songs, and Bible stories. Today we're going to be singing a song, I Have a Friend in Jesus Who Loves Me. Remember the song we sang right here, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama? Me Ama, Me Ama? We're going to be singing that in just a little bit. But right now, I want to welcome everyone to Kids Connection. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you and let you know that every Sabbath, we have a new program right here at Kids Connection. So come back, check out new programs that we have fun activities and different stories every Saturday. And if this is, if you are regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you guys here. Welcome back, kids. All right. So on a hot summer day like today, what better than drinking water, right? Well, did you guys know that in the Bible it says that God is the living water? And without this water that we drink, we will die. And the same way that without Jesus, we cannot survive. That's right. That's say it says that on the Bible. So I hope you guys remember that that Jesus is the living water, the one that that gives us life and eternal life. Well, we're gonna have so much fun together today, like always. I'm, I have to share something with you that is happening this month in the month of October. Not only here at Vallejo Drive, but all over the place. And I'll share that with you guys in just a little bit. But right now, welcome, boys and girls. I wish you were here with me. Let's go ahead and stand up, get ready to sing our song of the day. Yo tengo un amigo que me ama. That was a good song, wasn't it? I invite you guys to come back during the week. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of our website, graceandconditional.com forward slash Kids Connection and sing the song of the day throughout the week because this is going to remind us about our theme for today, okay? Now I'm gonna invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you because you love us. Thank you for this Kids Connection program. Thank you because you are with us and we ask, we invite you to come in, in our lives, in our hearts, and accept our worship at this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so now that we sang our song of the day, we pray together, let's get our program started. And right now, I'm well, this is a new month, so it's October. 
Last month, our offerings were going to one part of the world. Now we start a new, the last quarter, the last three months of the, of the year, our offerings are going to a different part of the world. And I, we're going to share this special place with you now. It's a place where it's one of the places that has most people in the world in one single country. Do you know where that is? It's India. We're going to be talking about India today. And let's watch and see how the message of God, the love of God, is being shared with all the people in India. Let's watch our missionary story today. Wow, 1% of people that know Jesus? That's incredible. We need to do something. We need to contribute with our offerings and let people know that God is love. God loves them. And since we can't go there, our offerings can help programs like the Hope Channel to share Jesus with the people in their own language the way that they understand. So ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries, clicking on the link on our website and donate to the missionaries. Don't forget that, okay? Also brand new I wanna share with you guys is that we have a way that you can donate to Kids Connection. Yes, this is a ministry that requires funds, requires money because we have to pay for certain things and we have to get certain materials. So if you wish that 
to help our program, you can go to the link above, click on that, and choose Kids Connection, and you can ask mom and dad to donate to our program as well, okay? But it's always appreciated when you pray for our service, when you pray for our worship, when you pray for this program. Your prayers are also very important. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, kids. Today, this month, as I said, I was going to share something with you. Guess what we celebrate in the month of October. October is the month that we recognize our pastors. It is Pastor Appreciation Month. So here's something. Here's a challenge I want to present to you. I'm going to invite everyone who's watching this program right now. Right now, you're listening and you're watching. I'm going to invite you to do something special for our pastors. Here at Vallejo Drive Church, we have four pastors. We have Pastor James Kyle. We have Pastor Linda Bishwash. We have Pastor Ben Guerrero. And we have Pastor Lauren Lim. Do you guys remember the pastors from our church? When you watch the service with mom and dad on our website, do you remember seeing them participating as you're going to see them today? Yes? Okay. So here's my challenge to you. Let's do something special for the pastors this month. It You can start today, okay? Or you can start tomorrow. You can make this as a family project. But I'm going to invite everyone to do something for our pastors. Either you record a message and you send it to us, a message to the pastors saying, something to Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, or Pastor Lauren, or all of them, or I'm going to invite you guys to write a note, m draw a card, um, say how much you appreciate them, say how much you miss them, say something special that you think is special for our pastors. And I'm going to ask you to send those posters to the church, those cards, those notes, send it to the church. The address is 300 Vallejo Drive, Glendale, California, 91206. It's the address to the church. I'm going to collect all those posts, those postcards, those cards, those letters, those notes, those pictures, those drawings, whatever you guys send to the church. I'm going to collect that and we are going to give it to the pastors at uh, sometime before the end of the month because this is Pastor Appreciation Month. Remember, the month of October, okay? So, deal, I'm going to remind you guys again, but start working on something very special and share with the pastors how much we appreciate them as pastors as they continue to do the ministry here for our church. Deal? Excellent. I look forward to receiving. And if you want to record a little video, send it to me. Send it to the email address, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. And I'll make sure that we'll put something, a nice video together to the pastors as well. Okay? Excellent. If you have any questions, just have mom and dad call me uh, or send me an email. And I'll be happy to work and coordinate that with them. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Who is your best friend? Who's your best friend? Do you have mom or dad as your best friend? Do you have one of your siblings as your best friend? Or do you have someone from school that is your, be that is your best friend? Or do you have a neighbor that is your best friend? Who is your best friend? What do you do with your best friend? Do you get to see your best friend as often as you wish? Now with everything that is going on, do you still see your best friend? Maybe you talk to your best friend a lot more on the phone than you used to. Maybe because you, your best friend, you can't see your best friend or you can't play with your best friend. How are you keeping up with your best friend? What ways do you have to communicate with your 
best friend. When you guys work together, how did you play and how much fun did you have together? I'm going to share something with you now, a short story, okay, about two best friends. They were the same age and they grew up together. They were toddlers, they were babies, and they grew up together. They were, uh, they lived nearby. They weren't neighbors, neighbors, next door neighbors, but they lived nearby. So their moms were always getting together and they always went to the park together and they went to church together. When they grew up, they started going to the same school together and they were playing together. They went to the same classroom together. They were inseparable. They were like this, everything, everything together every day because it was during the week, school. On Sabbath, they went to school, to church together. And on Sunday, they went to the park together. So it was like every single day of the week doing something fun together. Do you have a best friend that you do that? Hmm, no. Uh, I didn't have a best friend that I could do that. I had some friends, but not like every single day. Well, what happened is that one day, when they were both almost in high school, one of the friends, their dad got a promotion and went to work at a different city far away. They were so worried. They were so concerned. Oh no, what are we going to do now? We can't do all the things that we used to do together. We were like brothers and sisters. What are we going to do? Dad moved away. They were very sad. One family was living at a many, many, many hours a distance. And they kept the communication by phone. They emailed each other. They FaceTime each other. They play games on Zoom together and despite the distance and how far they were they still kept the communication that they had they shared their secrets they shared their problems they laughed together they cried together one day when they were going to college they decided that they want they wanted to go to the same college and when they met back at college they were again inseparable just like when they were kids nothing had changed everything was the same let me ask you something why do you think that they were back where they were in the beginning? Why do you think that when they met again, they were still best friends? Just like when they were back in school and when they were kids. Why do you think? Well, if you guessed that it was because they kept the connection and the relationship by phone, by Zoom, by, by FaceTime, by emails, you are absolutely correct. Because they kept their relationship and their friendship going, they shared, their, they shared all their secrets and they continued the communication with each other, they were able to keep their friendship alive. Okay, but if it wasn't for that, if they had never spoken again after one of the friends moved away, and if they have never seen each other or, or uh, uh, written emails to each other to share what was happening, if they had not kept contact with each other, that friendship would have disappeared. In order for us to keep a friendship going, we have to do 
things together. We have to play, go places, share secrets, tell stories, laugh together, go eat together, go visit each other's friend, each other's houses. And that's how we keep the friendship alive. I have friends nowadays that when we when I was a kid, your age, we used to go to school. And now I'm still friends with them because we have cell phones and because we message each other all the time. We keep the relationship, the friendship alive. Friends, there's someone who is my friend. There's someone who's my friend because he loves me. And this someone is also your friend because he loves you. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus is our friend. Jesus wants us to share things with him. He wants us to tell him secrets. He wants us to tell him our problems, our happiness, our joy. He wants us to laugh together and cry together. But in order for us to keep, for you and for me, to keep this friendship going, we need to have that communication. We need to communicate with Jesus and we need to share things with Jesus and we need to listen and we need to read about Jesus. That's how we keep that friendship alive. In today's story, we are going to hear about someone who was a very, very good friend of Jesus, of God. We're going to hear what he did and how, why he was a best friend of God. And just like on our song of today, I have a friend who loves me. He had a friend who loved him all the time. Stick around. After the song, your teacher is going to share the story with you of who this friend was and what he did. Right now, I'm going to invite you to stand up and sing our song of the day one more time. I have a friend who loves me. Let's close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you love us, because you are our friend. And thank you because we can be your friend too. I ask and I pray for all the boys and girls, 
may they always have a place in their hearts for your friendship so they can be friends with you. Bless each one of them. Protect them as we continue now and listen to the story of the Bible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us in an, on another Kids Connection program. I wish, you, I, I wish you, you have a nice, cool day. Don't forget to drink a lot of water. I love you guys so much. I miss you. Stick around for your teacher's program. Until next week on another Kids Connection program. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be with you today. Are you ready to sing our good morning song? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. We're glad to see you. We're glad to see you on this Sabbath day. We're glad to see you. We're glad to see you this happy Sabbath day. Well, I'd like to welcome a few of you this morning. I'd like to welcome Sky and Paul and Ethan and Ellis, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, Sammy and Carlina, Tyel and Aiden. I'd also like to welcome Vita and Max, Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade. I'd also like to welcome Josiah and Nicholas, Federico, Francisco and Francesca. I'd like to also welcome Will and Mia, Andrea, Joshua, happy birthday Joshua. I'd like to welcome Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Aaliyah and Ethan, JR and Seth, Zori and baby sister Zael. Welcome everybody, I'm glad I could be with you. Well, let's talk about integrity. Do you know what integrity means? Integrity means that people can trust us. They know that we won't lie, that we won't do dishonest things. Say that word a few times with me. Integrity. Integrity. It is doing what is right and good in all situations. Is it easier to make good choices when someone is watching you or when they're not watching you? Well, I think it's usually easier to make the right choice when someone is watching you. A person who has integrity, who is honest and truthful and trustworthy, will do the right thing even when no one is watching. Here's an example of that. Pretend that mommy has just made nice, fresh cookies. They smell so good. And you want to have a cookie, but mommy says, let's wait till after dinner. What do you do? If mommy goes out of the room, she's talking on the phone in another room and she's not paying attention to you. The cookies are right there on the counter. Now a person who has integrity would say, okay, mommy said I had to wait till after dinner, so I will wait. The person who does not have integrity will try to take a cookie when mommy's not looking. Well, what do you think you would do? Would you choose to obey mommy even when she wasn't watching you? If you knew you were going to get in trouble, you wouldn't do it. But if no one was watching, what would you do? This month, we're talking about five different people. And the first one we're going to talk about is a man named Enoch. Now, Enoch lived a long, long time ago. He was Noah's great, great grandfather. And he was about 65 years old. And usually when people are around 65 years old, they are grandmas and grandpas, right? But in those days, 
people live to be a lot older. So at age 65, Enoch had a child named Methuselah. And the Bible says that Enoch walked with God, that he loved God and he talked to God, and he did what God would want him to do. And there were many, many people living in those days. But the Bible says that they had forgotten about God. Enoch loved God and remembered God and tried to listen and do what God wanted him to do. After Enoch became the father of Methuselah, the Bible says that he lived how many more years? 100, 200, 300 more years. And he had other children besides Methuselah. He had other boys and girls. And I'm sure that he tried to teach them to love God also. Well, when Enoch was 365 years old, he loved God so much and he tried to do what God wanted him to do. And God saw that the other people had forgotten about him. So he decided he wanted Enoch to be in heaven with him. So one day, Enoch disappeared. And the Bible says that God took him away to heaven. Wow, what a wonderful thing that was. Well, I'm sure Enoch was very surprised to find himself in heaven. And I'm sure his family was very surprised that he disappeared. They could not find him. In the Bible, it says he could not be found. God had taken him away to heaven. Now, Enoch lived a long time before the great flood. He was one of two people in the Bible that God took to heaven before they died. The other one was Elijah, and we will be talking about him a little bit later. Did you know that when you ask another person to spend time with you, that you will slowly become friends? Say that you see a person on the playground that you want to play with, and you ask them to play with you. And then you play together at school. You might go to Sabbath school and sit next to each other there. You like spending time together. What are some things that you like to do with your good friends? Do you talk to each other? Do you listen to what each other is saying? Maybe sometimes you laugh together and you do everything with one another. You might help each other. Well, Enoch spent time with God just like God was his best friend. He talked to him, he walked with him. He got to know God and made choices that would please God. This is what made Enoch a man of integrity. He knew God and he knew the choices that God would want him to make. Walking with God is a phrase used many times in the Bible to describe a friendship with God. How can we learn to walk with God when we can't see him like we can our friends? Well, thankfully, God has let us know how we can do that through his word, the Holy Bible. Well, to begin our walk with God, we have to decide to go God's way. We have to care about the things that God cares about. If we're going the wrong way, like a man who wants to go to the North Pole, but he's going south, what do we have to do to go to the North Pole if we're walking south? Well, that's right. You have to turn around and go the other way. We all want to go our own way, but our own way sometimes leads us into trouble. But God says, turn to me and go my way, and I will take care of you. Well, God's way is all about having the best life possible. God loves us very much and wants us to be close to him. He wants to walk with us and talk with us. What can we do? Well, we have to figure out what it says in God's word so we know which way is the wrong way so we can repent. 
That means turning away from the things that we want to do and accepting the things that God wants us to do. God's way is always the better way. He always led his people in the Bible in the right way, and he wants to do the same for us. Now, Jesus is the way for us to be close to God, and this is the beginning of a friendship with God. Well, take a look at this can and tell me what you think this is. Well, this is a can of food. Can you tell what's inside of here? What do you think? Take a guess what you think is in here. How do we tell what is inside of a can of food? Well, it has a label. And that's how we tell what's inside of there. And this happens to be a can of beans. That's how we tell what's inside of a can. How do we tell what's inside of our heart? Well, the Bible says that how you speak shows what your heart is like. So your thoughts and your words and your actions show what your heart is like. So how does it say that people can tell what's in your mind and your heart? Why, by your words, by your actions, by how you treat other people, they can tell what you are like. If your actions are good and right, they will think of you that you have integrity, that you are trustworthy, if we choose to do what is right over and over, people will know what kind of a person we are. They will know that we love God and that we love Jesus. Well, this is our memory verse and we're gonna be saying this for the next five weeks. There is more to it than just this one section, so I will just introduce the first part today. Now, the first word is even. Can you say even? Even a child is known by his actions. Hebrews 20, verse 11. Can you say that with me? Even a child is known by his actions. Hebrews 20, verse 11. Let's say it one more time. Are you ready? Even a child is known by his actions. Hebrews 20, verse 11. And we will work on that a little bit more next week. We'll have maybe a couple more actions. But I want you to think about that first. If you're known for making trouble and yelling at people and being mean to people, how does that make them feel? If you are known by being polite and obedient, people are happy to be around you. Each week this month, we're going to learn a different reason that we should have integrity. We should have integrity to honor God. Remember, integrity is doing what is right, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. Enoch had integrity and he honored God. Instead of going his own way, he followed God's way in everything he did. The Bible tells us that we don't have to guess about how to do what is right. We just have to study the Bible and believe his word really does show us the best way to live. When we believe, God sends his Holy Spirit to live inside of us and help us. Without the Holy Spirit, we could never do the things that he wants to, us to do so that we honor God. Even when we do have the Holy Spirit, sometimes we still have difficulty, don't we? But if we turn to God and we will ask him to help us, he will show us the right way. We want to go our own way, but the Holy Spirit will change us to recognize where we could have done better, and he will teach us how to do that. By talking to God through prayer and listening to him, we will grow in his love and we will want to honor him. Just as Enoch chose to walk with God every day, we can see that making good choices becomes a part of our lives. Your next step is to walk with God this week. Find some ways to be a person of integrity. Let's say a little prayer together. Dear God, 
Please help us to have integrity and to do what is right, even when no one is watching us. Thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit and your Bible to show us how to walk with you. Amen. I would like to show you your staff today. And it is a little maze. Look, Mommy has a broken vase and she's looking very, very sad. The little girl accidentally broke the, the vase and she's trying to figure out how to tell Mommy that she broke the vase. On the bottom it says, always tell the truth even when it is not easy. Your job is to color the pictures and go through the maze and see if you can help her find her way to mommy so that she can tell the truth. I hope you had a good Sabbath school today. I will see you again next time. Goodbye.